Hi guys, I'm Leif Paulson for Cool Mini or Not, and I'm here with Ted Terranova, and in this video we're going to be talking about some uh, advanced strategies on how to keep your troops alive. So Ted, tell me uh, what we're going to be talking about today. We're mostly going to be focusing on the grid attack order. Taking advantage of the grid attack order is really important in rivet wars. You can take advantage of it both offensively and defensively. So how you position your troops within the grid, using the different squares, and trying to counteract the weapon types and the weapon strengths of someone attacking you or who you're attacking. It's, it's a great way to really push the game to the next level. Awesome. Let's get to it. All right, Ted, so tell me a little bit about the grid attack order and, uh, and how important this is to strategy in the game. Sure. Well, as you know, the, um, the game, when you're doing movement mm -hmm. or range, you use the grids to move. Right, but the then if you boxes. look right the larger boxes but each grid is made of four squares mm -hmm. and the ordering of your units within the grid mm -hmm. is very important to how it is attacked or how your units are attacked and they go by this grid order which goes one two three four so here I have these units set up mm -hmm. and we go one two three so that's the order you right. would attack in right. so you'd have to attack this first unit and then you would have to kill that unit and remove it from the board mm -hmm. before you could start to attack the second unit and then take that out to get to the third unit. I see. So in this particular case with my Schlitten, that's, that's a favorable setup because I can attack uh, one armor units, but I can't attack two. Right. So uh, here I'm able to actually attack, but if the, the order was reversed, uh, I would not be able to, to even do right. damage to that, that grid. Right, effect. and that's what we want to show in the video, that this is really important when you finish your movement, mm -hmm. how you set up your units um, is really important to... Uh, to how they're going to fare when you attack them. So if I just switch out this guy and put him there at the end of my movement turn and put the cycle in the first point, so we're going one, two, three, one spot is now the cycle. And yep. like you said, you can't attack the cycle now. Right. So you would have to destroy the cycle before you could attack these guys. So they're pretty much invulnerable now to the, to the shite. Right, right. Yeah, so that seems like a, a much better play. And so when I'm ever, whenever I'm referencing the chart, I'm always looking across at yours for the one. Don't, don't look at your own. That's just for your own reference for where the enemy's going to be. Right, so it's you. always oriented yeah. towards yourself. Yeah. So you're always thinking one, two, three, four when you set up the order of your troops. But your when chart. you're attacking, you have to look at the enemy's yeah. uh, grid attack order to yes. determine that. So if I was attacking you with this bike, yes. I would go with one and start with that guy. Excellent. And, and I could do the, the reverse, and if I had an, an infantry here, because uh, it would be much harder for you to attack my, uh, my infantry. Than right. Them. Like, I only get one die against the infantrymen. Right. So you would rather have this order, and then I would have to destroy the infantryman. He gets to attack. So exactly. on his first attack, if he attacks this infantryman and mm -hmm. misses, mm -hmm. he has to attack again. Right. If he wipes him out, then he's open to other attacks. But then my infantry go, they can't attack that guy, so... Makes sense. All right, perfect. <clears throat> so, Ted, in, uh, in one of the games that we were playing, uh, there was a lot of uh, flat grid attacks that were happening, and it really devastated me in that particular game. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how that works and, and also the tactics that I can use to uh, try and avoid maximizing, you know, or minimizing your attack sure. efficiency? Yeah, so, so we added the flat grid attack as just another way of, of figuring out the damage that was done or the way to attack units. Mm -hmm. So we just talked about the grid attack order mm -hmm. where you have to attack, I would have to attack this unit first because he's in your first square. Right. And I would have to destroy that unit before moving on to the next unit. Right. What's interesting about the flat grid is when you target a grid, mm -hmm. you get to hit all the units in that grid. Awesome. And I get to roll against yeah. all of them. So if my pounder was to attack this grid, he has mm -hmm. a flat grid attack, mm -hmm. he I would roll against this guy because he's a one armor, mm -hmm. I would roll two dice against this unit. Because this guy is a two armor, I would roll just one die against him. Mm -hmm. And then I would roll against this third unit and get two dice again against him. And as everybody knows, when you, uh, if I could check out the dice real quick. Yeah, here you go. When you roll the dice, I would roll the two dice against him. If I got a hit, a five, or a six, mm -hmm. that would be a hit. Even if I get two fives, it only counts as one hit right. during that during that attack. Right. So that's really to show the power of the flat grid is is no matter what my sequencing is. Before we were talking about it, it would be better to have sure. my sequencing, but with the flat grid, it's just it blankets everything. It's a large shell or some sort of right. blast, and it's it's just hitting everything in there. Yeah, it's our way of out. simulating an uh, area of effect kind of attack. Yeah. That that this shell when it hits, it's just throwing shrapnel and everything all around. Yeah, and it's I, just going to hit everybody. I definitely felt the effects of it in yeah, one of those yeah. games. Uh, so and to so to counter that. You definitely want to 
um, the way you're looking at other units when you set up your grid, mm -hmm. you probably want to disperse those guys. So if you move them into, or if, if it can work, that you can keep them in separate, um, separate grids, then the grid, the uh, flat grid attack, really loses a lot of its effectiveness because sure. I'm really just attacking one unit. Sure. So if I do something more like this or, or like this, then... Yeah, I only get to choose one grid to attack, so if I attack there, the best I can do is take out your one infantryman, Absolutely. where when you clump them together, that really gives me the opportunity to, to take out a bunch of units. So just be careful whenever you see a flight grid attacks? That's right. All right, All right Ted, so I have uh, one of my monowheel dragoons here. Tell me a little bit about this attack, because it has a, a, this chain grid uh, right. attack next to, symbol next to it, rather than just a, a value. Tell me a little bit about how that works in the gameplay. So that's a different, another kind of an attack, like the flat mm -hmm. grid was different, mm -hmm. the chain grid is different, but it still uses the attack grid order. So you're still, when you attack me, you're still going one, two, three, four. Right. What's different is, when you attack this first unit, mm -hmm. if you damage him, right. you then get to which one hit would take this guy out. Mm -hmm. You then would get to attack this unit. Okay. If you damage this unit, you'd take it out of the way, and then you'd attack this, this unit as well. If you, if you, let's say, killed this infantryman, did some damage to him, and then hit him, and, mm -hmm. or attacked him, and mm -hmm. missed, that would break the chain. Okay. The idea is that you're, they're, they're kind of like a cavalry charge. So you're rushing through the troops, and you're just mowing them down. But if one of those troops you know, gets stops, his, you. stops you, yeah. gets in your way, then that stops the attack and halts it right there. Excellent, excellent. So it's, it, you basically just keep going. It's kind of like exploding dice in other systems and things like that. Right. And uh, what happens, so these are all one uh, one. Well, I just models. want to show another example that, like, that you can take advantage of, you know, putting this guy from a strategic point of view, mm -hmm. you, you still want to take advantage of the, uh, the grid attack order by putting this guy, you only get one die against this guy. Right, so because he's a two armor. So it's much more armor. likely to break the chain earlier on right. if you put this guy up there. You roll the one die, hopefully that, that stops the attack right there. Okay. And what would happen then if, for instance, I had, um, you had a two wound model. So okay. let's say that, I, that I'm bringing this on. I've, I, I'm changing up my, my unit. So now I'm bringing on a land krieger instead of my dragoon. Right, and I got my boss mech out and there. And you've got your boss. So I've got my chain grid attack. I can uh, attack him and I, I can attack others. Um, do I stop if I don't kill him or do I get to hit him twice because he's in the one or two slot? Tell me, tell me how this works. Okay. He's still considered one unit, so even though he takes up two squares, right. he's just considered the one unit, okay. so you get to attack him once. Mm -hmm. So the Land Krieger would attack him. Right. If he scored a hit, he would take one wound, okay. but then you wouldn't attack him again. You would move on to the next unit in I the see. chain grid, which he's taken up the one, two square, so the so next one would be three. three. You'd, sure. you'd maybe hit the infantry, and if you hit him, wipe him out, and maybe the next guy. I see, I see. Excellent. So I basically just need to score a hit, whether or not I kill the unit, whether it's a, uh, a hero or something larger, then right. I just need to score one hit and then I, I'm able to sequence through. So it's kind of that domino pattern of if I knock the first guy down, then I, I continue through. Yeah, yeah, we're doing that simulation of like the idea that he hits him, maybe knocks him a little to the side and then barrels through and takes those other guys I like. Out. I like to think of these as kind of rock'em sock'em robots oh, and yeah. he like uppercuts him and then he just falls back. Well, that's the super the robot behind. punch right there. He's yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, you know, he's going to squish his, his, his allies <laughs> behind him. That's the way totally. I, I visualize it. Well, thank you very much, Ted. I Thanks appreciate you uh, going over some yeah, of these sure. rules to help clarify, and yeah. hopefully it helps some of our viewers at home. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thanks a lot.